hear the music. Hello, everybody. I'm Matt Robinson, and welcome to another exciting edition of the League Wrap Around. This is the program that gets you caught up on anything and everything happening around the NFL. Coming up on this edition of the program, we preview week four's most important games in the NFL, including the Monday Night Football doubleheader between the Tennessee Titans versus the Miami Dolphins and the Seattle Seahawks versus the Detroit Lions. Plus, we have your week four game picks and also the latest on a quarterback that has been in the news for quite a while, but for all of the wrong reasons, but also played some major games and definitely had some thrilling moments in his career. All of that's coming up after the break. And again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us on the program as we get you going for another week in this early but exciting part of the NFL season. So as always, before we get into my top three storylines, I want to just recap some scores from the most important games from week three in the NFL. Thursday night football saw the New England Patriots take on the New York Jets. Aaron Rodgers handled his business in this game. Jets would win 24-3. The Houston Texans took on the Minnesota Vikings. It was all Vikings. Minnesota would win 34-7. A thrilling game in New Orleans between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New Orleans Saints. The Eagles hold on to win thanks to Saquon Barkley getting a touchdown and a two-point conversion late in the game. Eagles win. 15 to 12. Also, we had the Detroit Lions take on the Arizona Cardinals. Close game down in the desert. Detroit would win 20 to 13. The Baltimore Ravens squared off against the Dallas Cowboys. Baltimore would win by three, 28 to 25. Sunday night football saw the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the Atlanta Falcons. Chiefs would win 22 to 17. Monday night football, the doubleheader. First game was the Jacksonville Jaguars going up against the Buffalo Bills. It was all Bills. They would win 47 to 10. And the second game of the doubleheader was a thrilling one between the Washington Commanders and the Cincinnati Bengals. Two Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks from LSU, Joe Burrow, going up against Jaden Daniels. It was a night for Jaden Daniels. Jaden, alongside Terry McLaurin and company, would help the commanders beat the Bengals. Final score, 38-33. to 33. And those were your scores from Week 3's most important games in the NFL. All right, now it's time for my top three storylines. I want to start off talking about Jaden Daniels. If you missed the Monday night football game, Last week, between the Washington Commanders and the Cincinnati Bengals, you missed one heck of a game, and you missed out on a great player, a great quarterback that is no doubt going to be a star in the making, and his name is Jaden Daniels. As I mentioned earlier, Jaden Daniels won the Heisman Trophy out of LSU, put up some fantastic numbers during his Heisman season with LSU. The number two overall pick in this year's NFL draft, drafted right behind Caleb Williams. You know, Caleb wound up being drafted by the Chicago Bears. So far, out of the rookie quarterbacks that have been drafted this year, Caleb is having his struggles right now in Chicago. Bo Nix is trying to find his way in Denver. Drake May, for the moment, is not starting in New England. J.J. McCarthy is done for the year. Who knows what his future is going to be because Sam Darnold is playing lights out right now. But Jaden Daniels is special, in my opinion, out of the, the class that was drafted in terms of the quarterbacks in the first round. Jaden Daniels looked so poised and looked so confident and so ready in that Monday night win over the Cincinnati Bengals. I said it and on the night of the NFL draft. I said it in the preseason, and I'm going gonna, gonna to say it again. Jaden Daniels will win this year's Offensive Rookie of the Year. I still stand by it as long as he can stay healthy, as long as his offensive linemen can protect him. And Dan Quinn is a defensive coach, but 
His predator, his pedigree's been pretty good. You know about him as a DC, as a defensive coordinator, I should say, with Seattle, and was a head coach with the Atlanta Falcons. If everything goes well, knock on wood, Washington could have a solid year. Will they win the, the division? No. Philadelphia will easily win the NFC East. The Giants, they're rebuilding. The Cowboys, you know that's the soap opera. That's the drama that never ends. But Washington has a solid chance to be a wild card team this year. I mean, it's wide open in the NFC. But Jaden Daniels put on a show last Monday night in that win over the Cincinnati Bengals. And for those of you, now I've watched a lot of football in my day. I'm not old, but I'm dating myself a little bit. Washington was on television a lot during the 80s and the 90s. And then they had spurts. They were on television off and on during the 2000s, but the winning was not consistent. And then I really missed, the. I really loved the RG3 era that one year, that rookie year where he really shined. And then when he suffered the injury in that playoff game against Seattle, everything went downhill from there. And then Kirk, during the, uh, the Kirk Cousins era in Washington, there were moments, there were flashes of greatness. They went to the playoffs, but... Nothing really capitalized, but there were some solid moments during the Kirk Cousins era in Washington. The one year that Washington had the wild card playoff game at home, losing to Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But Taylor Heineke was the quarterback, and then Sam Howell, that era was very short. But this is going to be something special with Jaden Daniels. And, again, if you missed out on last Monday night's game against the Bengals, you missed out on something special. And I think this is going to be a season that's going to surprise people, a lot of not just football fans, but it's going to surprise a lot of Commanders fans out there. Because, I mean, it, it's been a minute since the Commanders have waited for a quarterback to really push them to the next level. And Jaden Daniels getting it done, not just with his arm, but with his leg as well. I mean, he made the difference, and everybody got on board on the offensive side. Terry McLaurin, Zach Ertz, he's found the fountain of youth in Washington. Uh, Luke McCaffrey, Deami Brown, Noah Brown, Brian Robinson Jr., Austin Eckler, everybody – has everybody fed off of Jaden's energy in that Monday night win over Cincinnati. So I think this is going to be the start of great things for, I think it's going to be a solid season in the nation's capital. My next storyline is going to be the Minnesota Vikings. I mentioned earlier about this year's draft class, specifically in court with quarterbacks. Jaden Daniels, has been so far the creme de la creme. He's been the cream of the crop when it comes to the quarterbacks that have been drafted this year, surpassing Caleb Williams, surpassing Bo Nix, certainly surpassing Drake May, and, of course, surpassing J.J. McCarthy. So when J.J. McCarthy got hurt in the preseason, done for the year, when people, when the news came out that Sam Darnold was going to be the starting quarterback, People were saying, okay, Sam's got experience. He's solid. But how will Justin Jefferson and the rest of the receivers benefit from him? Well, the proof is in the pudding, and so far so good. Darnold and the Vikings, they've delivered. Week one, beating the Giants, 28-6. to Week two, beating the 49ers, 23-17. to And week three, dismantling the Houston Texans, 34 -17. To seven, Not just with the play of Sam Darnold, but also Justin Jefferson, he's been effective as well. How about the first-year running back, Aaron Jones? Aaron has given this team life in the running back position. The last several years, the Vikings were a little were flustered, or should I say that was a key element that was missing from their offense, a running game. Aaron Jones, you know about his years with the Green Bay Packers, how effective he was, and he has been effective and then some so far in his first year 
with the Minnesota Vikings. Also, some key players on the uh, defensive side, like Jerry Tillery. Also, you've got uh, Stephon Gilmore. You know what he brings to the table as well. Fabian Morrow. Also, uh, Harrison Smith. I mean, Harrison Smith has been one of the best, not only the best defensive backs or best safeties in the league for over a decade, just one of the best players, period, in the league. And certainly, uh, Kevin O'Connell definitely deserves strong consideration for coach of the year. I know it's very early in the year, but he definitely deserves some strong consideration for coach of the year honors. So the Minnesota Vikings, they've superseded expectations so far. Again, we've only played three weeks in this young NFL season, but Minnesota's been balling right now, and don't sleep on the Vikings because they've got a solid team. And Sam Darnold, he's got the experience, and when he's healthy and when he gets the protection, he can put up some solid numbers. So big ups and kudos to the Minnesota Vikings. And for my last storyline is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers. So Mike Tomlin, head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, still consistent, still doing his thing. And in a world where we've had so many changes happen, and certainly we've seen so many changes happen in the NFL in terms of coaching jobs and GMs being fired, defensive coordinators being fired, Mike Tomlin has just been a mainstay for over two decades now in the NFL. Still the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, an organization that preaches consistency and stability. And what hasn't been consistent and stable is Coach Tomlin's decision on the quarterback position. Who's going to be the starting quarterback? For the moment, it's Justin Fields. Will Russell Wilson get his chance? Only time will tell. But no matter who's been the starting quarterback, the Steelers so far are undefeated at 3-0. Pittsburgh, they beat the Falcons in week one. Week two, they beat the Denver Broncos. And week three, beating the Los Angeles Chargers. So Justin Fields, solid, effective, putting up decent numbers. But when we think of Pittsburgh, I mean, with the exception of quarterbacks, you know, big uh, Ben Roethlisberger and Terry Bradshaw, Pittsburgh is all about running game and the defense. And when you think about, when I think about defense, one of the best, not just defensive linemen, not just uh, linebackers, but one of the best in the league, T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt, along with uh, Patrick Queen, Alex Highsmith, Minka Fitzpatrick, uh, Terrell Edmonds, uh, Cam Hayward, who just got a, a, a nice contract in the offseason. Their bread and butter is running game, defense, and let the quarterback fill in the blanks. And right now, that's what Justin Fields is doing. The defense is coming in and really being the bread and butter. The running game, as well as the quarterback, Justin Fields, they're filling in the blanks. But Pittsburgh... Listen, when you watch a Pittsburgh Steelers game, it's never pretty. It's hard-nosed. It's blue-collar. It's not fancy. But it works. And people watch. People enjoy watching the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, when you watch a Pittsburgh Steelers game, it's almost like a contrast in styles. They may be, there's a lot of teams that they play. The majority of those teams are very flashy in their approach to the offense. Pittsburgh very old school, no nonsense. They come in, handle their business, and that's what's worked for them for decades since the Steel Curtain. Since go, we can go back to uh, the 90s with the Cordell Stewart and Neil O'Donnell and Greg Lloyd and Kevin Green, and even in the big, in the uh, Ben Roethlisberger era, Pittsburgh, it's not pretty. But you better buckle up because it's going to be a bumpy ride. And it's a rough win, but a win is a win. And you take it. It's certainly Steelers fans worldwide, people in Steel City, people in Pittsburgh and the surrounding areas certainly love what the Steelers are doing right now. And certainly Steelers are balling right now. And as far as the 
quarterback situation is concerned, Mike Tomlin, it's, he says it's going to be a week-to-week situation. It's going to be if Justin Fields has the hot hand, he'll roll with Justin Fields. If he feels Russell Wilson is ready, he'll let Russell get his chance. But that's what's working in Pittsburgh right now. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, those are my, those are my top three storylines. And before we preview week four's most important games, Hall of Fame quarterback Brett Favre recently went to Washington, D.C., where he testified at a congressional hearing, recently revealed to congressmen and lawmakers that he has been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And he believes that he attributes his diagnosis of Parkinson's disease to CTE. Of course, there's been research for about a decade and a half about CTE, and it's linked to concussions, brain trauma, and Brett also lamented to politicians at the congressional hearing that he doesn't know how much time he's going to have left with his recent diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. And Brett Favre, as far as in the last three to five years, he's been in the news and has made headlines for all of the wrong reasons. Of course, most recently with the whole scandal with being involved in taking money from the poor and vulnerable in his home state of Mississippi with the whole uh, Mississippi welfare fund scandal, particularly with TANF, which is the temporary assistance for needy families. His legacy the last three to five years has taken, has taken a beating and he hasn't been doing well. But as far as the football is concerned, Listen, I get it with the whole dipping his toe in and out of retirement and playing those type of games, but as far as concerned, Brett was a gunslinger. Brett, let's just call it for what it is, not refined in terms of football skills, but a passion for the game. Won a Super Bowl, played in two Super Bowls, won one and lost one. However, setting records in every passing category from yards, touchdowns, so on and so forth. So many classic memories. I know one, a Brett Favre game that comes to my mind was the Monday night football game against the Raiders when they were playing in Oakland. And that was the game that was in tribute to his father because his dad had passed away several days before that Monday night football game. And he just went, He just went off. He went off in a great way and was able to pull off a stunning performance. A three-time league MVP, as I mentioned earlier, winning a Super Bowl. And, you know, football-wise, Brett Favre, Hall of Famer, what could you say about him? Had you on the edge of your seat for making all of the right plays and, unfortunately, all of the wrong plays. But great seasons with the Green Bay Packers. The one year with the New York Jets, not good, not great, but it was it was decent. And then his first year with the Minnesota Vikings was certainly outstanding, playing alongside uh, Adrian Peterson and also Sidney Rice and Vasante Shanko, just to name a few. But Brett Favre, again, made the announcement this week during a congressional hearing that he is suffering from Parkinson's disease, which he believes is related to him suffering concussions and the possibility of having CTE. All right, that takes care of that. Now it's time to preview week four's most important games. We have the New Orleans Saints going up against the Atlanta Falcons. For the Saints, they had a chance to beat the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday. They stayed in the game, and they wind up letting the Eagles come back to beat them. Derek Carr did not play a great game. Alvin Kamara was effective, but you could tell that Taysom Hill, his presence was missed tremendously. Taysom did not play in his game due to a bruised lung. Saints defense, they did enough. They played well in this game. I mean, Jalen Hurts committed a lot of turnovers, but they just could not 
stop the the gentleman known as Saquon Barkley just running up and down that field. And then Dallas Goddard, their tight end, Saints, they hung with the Eagles as long as they could, but the Eagles wind up beating the Saints by three. As for the Atlanta Falcons, they lost a close game on Sunday night to Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. So you know they are looking for retribution in a rivalry game that goes back to 1967. The Atlanta Falcons, they entered the league in 1966. The following year, the Saints would enter the NFL in 67. So these two teams, you know the rivalry. We talk about Cowboys-Giants, Cowboys-Eagles, Giants-Eagles, Cowboys-Commanders. And you also have those rivalries like 49ers-Cowboys. And you could put the Saints and the Falcons in there as well, as well as with Bengals and Browns. Saints, Falcons, it's never a dull moment whether they're playing in New Orleans or whether they're playing in Atlanta. And this game is going to be in the ATL, and certainly a lot of Saints fans will make the trek to Atlanta for that game between New Orleans and Atlanta. The Philadelphia Eagles will square off against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So first for the Buccaneers, Tampa Bay, a surprising loss to Bo Nix and the Denver Broncos. They were just not on their A game. Denver, they had their way with the Bucks defense, which is certainly surprising. And Bo Nix played a solid game. He played an effective game. As for the Philadelphia Eagles, what a comeback it was down in New Orleans. Committed a lot of turnovers for much of the game. But late in the fourth quarter, Jalen Hurts made a great play to Dallas Goddard to get him a first and goal. Saquon Barkley... Scores a touchdown, gets the two-point conversion. Eagles win by three. So the Eagles, they brought that rocky spirit with them down to New Orleans, and the birds are going to continue to fly south as they hope to channel that rocky spirit down in Tampa with the Eagles taking on the Buccaneers. So A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, those awesome receivers, they're questionable for Philly. They've got Dallas Goddard, and they've got Saquon Barkley. And, of course, they got Jalen Hurts. For the Buccaneers, Baker Mayfield, he hopes to rebound from the Broncos game and try to make sense of what's – try to make sense, I should say, of what's to come for this opponent going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. The next game will be the Minnesota Vikings going up against the Green Bay Packers. Another classic rivalry game in the NFC North, Vikings and Packers. Let's start off with the Vikings. As I mentioned earlier in the show, Minnesota playing lights out right now. Sam Darnold, who would have expected? Not me. Aaron Jones, first year with the Vikings, playing great. Justin Jefferson doing what Justin Jefferson does best, right? Made great catches and get touchdowns. Vikings defense, on point led by Harrison Smith and company. Green Bay, no Jordan Love, no problem. Malik Willis has come in and has played very effectively, beating the Tennessee Titans in week three and then beating the Indianapolis Colts in week two. So the Packers have been balling as well. But Minnesota, they've surprised a lot of people, including me, in this uh, early part of the NFL season. So when you have a classic rivalry game, it's one thing. But when you're playing at Lambeau Field, it's a whole nother ball game. You know the Cheeseheads are going to be repping and going to be out there in full force. But don't discredit Vikings fans now. Short trip from Minneapolis to Green Bay. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. It's going to be an exciting game and definitely worth a watch with the Minnesota Vikings going up against the Green Bay Packers. The Washington Commanders square off against the Arizona Cardinals. So for Arizona, tough loss last week to the Detroit Lions. Kyler Murray played a solid game. Marvin Harrison Jr. was solid as well as James Conner. But in the end, Detroit was able to find ways to get down the field and was able to take the victory. For Washington, last Monday night, the impressive win over the Cincinnati Bengals, and this was the coming out party for Jaden Daniels. 
for those that have yet to watch Commanders football this year or those that didn't care about the Washington Commanders, I think you better care about them now, and especially that quarterback, Jaden Daniels. So we've got an, an intriguing matchup with two solid and effective quarterbacks. Both have strong arms. Both are great when using their legs. I know a lot of Commanders fans are going to make that trip down to the desert for an, an interesting late game as the Washington Commanders take on the Arizona Cardinals. Sunday night football, the Buffalo Bills square off against the Baltimore Ravens. First for Buffalo. Buffalo put on a master class in offense last Monday night, dismantling the Jacksonville Jaguars. Josh Allen and company were on point. The defense was on point, led by Vaughn Miller and also DeMar Hamlin getting an interception. For the Baltimore Ravens, it was a must-win situation last week down in Jerry World in Arlington, Texas. Took care of their business. They beat the Dallas Cowboys. And it was a lot of Derrick Henry and a lot of Lamar Jackson. So now they head home for a Sunday night matchup. These are going to be two quarterbacks doing their thing. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. Two quarterbacks, styles differ. Lamar, strong arm, but loves to use his legs. Josh Allen, strong arm, but more accurate, but he too is not afraid to resort to his athletic ability as well. Sunday night football is going to be a good one between, well, not just a good one, I think it's going to be a great one between Buffalo and Baltimore. Monday night football doubleheader. First game, the Tennessee Titans versus the Miami Dolphins. So for Miami, they have their growing pains right now. No Tua Tagovailoa. He's on injured reserve due to, due to a concussion. Skylar Thompson, if you watch that game, they didn't play well. They were manhandled by the Seattle Seahawks. But the Dolphins signed Tyler Huntley. It appears that as though Tyler Huntley is going to be ready to play in this Monday night matchup. If not, they've got Skylar Thompson ready to go. But they're going to be going up against the Tennessee Titans. So the Titans, they're looking for retribution as well. Having some growing pains right now so far. They're 0-3 this year. Will Levis, for the moment, is the starting quarterback. And both organizations, they're having growing pains right now. Both young, both trying to find their way. And um, one thing is for sure, knock on wood, this could be a game where Tyreek Hill, if everything goes well for him, he could change the game in a lot of different ways for the Miami Dolphins. This should be a low-scoring affair, but I think it'll come down to defense in this one between the Tennessee Titans and the Miami Dolphins. And the other game in the doubleheader, we have the Seattle Seahawks going up against the Detroit Lions. First for the Lions, big win over the Arizona Cardinals. Jared Goff, he made plays when necessary, especially in the final minutes of that contest. Amon Ra St. Brown doing what Amon Ra does best make tough catches, and get touchdowns. As for the Seattle Seahawks, Seattle's one of the hottest teams in the league right now. Seattle, running game, and defense have been on point. The running game, as far as the running game is concerned, Kenneth Walker has missed a couple of games. Zach Charbonnet has come in and has really played nicely in the place of of Kenneth Walker. Geno Smith, you don't have to ask too much of him. Solid, dependable, and efficient. Finding Tyler Lockett and, of course, finding DK Metcalf on big plays. Seattle and Detroit, I think this is going to be a great on Monday night. Now it's time for my game of the week. My game of the week is going to be the Seattle Seahawks versus the Detroit Lions. Last season was remarkable for the Detroit Lions. Nobody expected Detroit, including me, to play this well. Jared Goff, him and Dad Campbell, 
they were still trying to figure things out, and they figured it out. They figured it out so well that they wound up playing in the NFC Championship game last year, losing a close one to the San Francisco 49ers. But it gave not only them, not just Jared and Coach Campbell, but also Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, Jameer Gibbs, Aiden Hutchinson, David Montgomery and company, something to look forward to in the off season. And certainly Detroit is one of the favorites, not just in the NFC, but in all of the NFL to go to the big game. So while people have been talking about Detroit and what an amazing season that they had last year and enjoying the momentum coming into this season, the Seattle Seahawks are under the radar right now, but Seattle has done it not the hard way, but they've done it, well, you could say they've done it the gritty way. Running game and defense. Geno Smith, people counted him out. Guess what? He's enjoying his second life with the Seattle Seahawks. Head coach Mike McDonald the defense, was the defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. He has come in and has given this team a new life and a new lease on their approach when it comes to games. That approach he had in Baltimore is the approach that he's brought so far to the Pacific Northwest. Seattle and Detroit, it is going to be a fun game. I think it's going to be a hard-hitting game. I think we won't see a lot of offense get going till late in the third quarter, especially going into the fourth quarter. I think it's going to come down to which quarterback is going to make the first mistake late in the game. Will it be an interception? Will it be a forced fumble? Will it be a team not converting on a key fourth down? I think this is going to be a great one between the Seattle Seahawks and the Detroit Lions, my game of the week. All right, before we get on out of here, I want to give you my picks on who I think will win week four's most important games. The New Orleans Saints versus the Atlanta Falcons. It's always a raucous crowd. It's always nail-biting games when these two teams play in this rivalry. I like the Saints in a close one. The Philadelphia Eagles going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I like the Eagles to win. The Minnesota Vikings going up against the Green Bay Packers. I like Minnesota to win. The Washington Commanders going up against the Arizona Cardinals. I like Washington to win. Sunday night football, the Buffalo Bills going up against the Baltimore Ravens. I like Baltimore to win. Monday night football, doubleheader, the Tennessee Titans squaring off against the Miami Dolphins. I like Tennessee to win. The Seattle Seahawks versus the Detroit Lions. This is going to be a a fun game. It's going to be a, a tight and a very close game down in Motown. But I like the Seattle Seahawks to win. So, again, my picks are... New Orleans, Philadelphia, Minnesota, Washington, Baltimore, Tennessee, and Seattle. And that's it. Again, thank you so much for joining me on the program. It's always fun. And until next time, everybody, I'm Matt Robinson saying so long. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe, and thank you for watching.